morning everyone so today is the wonderful morning as we all have gathered here to appreciate cinema and different cultures related to cinema through the screening of best award winning films by the cultural cinema 2022 culture cinema is a mumbai based international film festival and year 2022 is the second edition of this festival This year the festival was opened on July 14 and the award ceremony was conducted on July 23 Both online and offline screenings were done by Culture Cinema 2022 For the first time Culture Cinema planned to screen the best movies in physical space outside Mumbai Today Mr Praveen Nagda festival director of Culture Cinema and Kit Cinema has come to dme for the screening of the best 5 award winning films thus uh, the second day of the screening would be happen in the bennett university by the culture cinema 2022 dme and culture cinema has a long association as dme is the academic partner of culture cinema and cinest international film festival sifi which is the annual film festival of dme media school is the festival partner of culture cinema today we will be screening five best selected movies of the second edition of culture cinema 2022 which is followed by the two online discussion uh, discussion sessions before proceeding further I would like to call Professor Dr. Amri Saxena, Dean and Professor, DME Media School, to highlight about the culture cinema and the today's program. Today is a special day uh, for the reason, as uh, Dr. Manmeet Kaur already pointed out, that we are having these uh, uh, screenings in the physical space. uh most of the students are aware that we in dme media school organize uh, uh, sinestra international film festival every year uh in which also such kind of screenings uh, have not taken place for the last two years uh because in uh, uh, sifi 2021 uh, 20 and 2021 both the times we organized the festival in the hybrid mode wherein uh, the sessions were happening mostly online a few sessions deliberations and discussions happened in the physical space but uh, not exactly the way the this is these screenings today are happening because we have created a separate platform as it is happening in the case of culture cinema as well we are in uh, continuously the screenings are happening so it's an occasion which has happened uh, after two years here in this uh, studio and i welcome uh, mr praveen nagda uh, because uh, the whole idea of culture cinema was mooted by him uh, two years back and uh, he organized the first edition and the second edition despite all odds Uh, because when he planned the first edition the second wave uh, struck second wave of covid 19 but still the the festival was postponed but it happened so this year also uh, because of the third wave there was a, a fix as to when it is going to happen but finally it happened and this year as he has added this uh, additional feature uh, that in mumbai it uh, the, the screenings did not happen in the physical space so he decided that in two educational educational institutions associated with the culture cinema uh, these uh, screenings should take place uh, and since uh, dme is a partner and sifi is a partner with the uh, culture cinema so he is kind enough uh, to spare one time one day for us to have these uh, screenings and uh, since uh, bandit university is also uh, associated is a partner of culture cinema and that is how tomorrow uh, he is going to uh, to, to have these uh, screenings innings in bennett university so today this is a day long uh, uh, activity uh, where in five uh, screenings uh, are taking place uh, i will request you uh, request after this to mr praveen nagda uh, to give further details as to how many films uh, were were received this year and how many awarded because all the details uh, uh, can should be told to you and out of those films which have been awarded in 2020 
2022. So five selected films uh, he has uh, chosen to screen today. So besides the screening of these five films, there will also be a session in between during the day, uh, which will be on discussions discussions on whatever films have been received have been uh, part of culture cinema and particularly uh, the films uh, which are being screened today so and, and people uh, from uh, different countries will be joining in that session and we will have that session on zoom and uh, as in many sessions we do here uh, the, the, the whole uh, discussion will be uh, screened here on a screen so that everybody can be part uh, of that discussion so this is uh, in nutshell and also uh, i will uh, welcome uh, miss uh, shivani uh, who is a uh, uh, producer uh, of the second film which is to be screened today which is the savior uh, so i welcome her as well so finally uh, we are glad that uh, this session is uh, going to have a good uh, start and uh, uh, with this uh, i hand it over to dr manmeet kaur Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for providing us the highlights of Culture Cinema 2022 and also about the guest of the day. DM is honored to have the auspicious and the gracious presence of Mr. Praveen Nagda, Festival Director of Culture Cinema 2022 and also the Festival Director of Kids Cinema, and also Miss Shivani Sokhe, Executive Producer of the film The Savior. So now I request Professor Dr. Susmita Bala, Head DM Media School. Professor Dr. Amri Saxena, Professor and Dean DME Media School, to kindly felicitate the guest. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So, requesting sir, Praveen sir, to please address the gathering and also provide the highlight of the film festival and also the detailing of the best five award-winning film which we have selected, which the Culture Cinema has selected for the today's screening. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Saxena and uh, entire team members of DME and the students who are here to see the screenings today. Uh, I won't keep my conversation too long. I will, uh, however, inform you uh, in quick bites. Culture Cinema is a unique concept-led film festival where we talk about the films on unique uh, cultural concepts. Uh, like we wear different kind of clothes, we eat different kind of food, we live in a different kind of history if you look at ourselves. Uh, similarly, the world cultures are unique to each and every country. So in this festival, we had identified 21 unique categories of cultures. And uh, based on those cultures, the filmmakers from the world over who make films uh, which are very specific to those cultures, we invite them to participate in the festival. And uh, there is a very uh, rigorous process of uh, selection in terms of shortlisting of films. And then there's a jury which is truly international. Uh, we started uh, this festival in 2021. Uh, with the support of UNESCO, uh, Jaipur Literature Festival, uh, CIFEJ, uh, DME, Sinesta, all of us uh, uh, supported in bringing up this whole festival for the world. Uh, we have about 30 plus countries participation and uh, about 200 films we received uh, this year. Uh, last year we had received half the number of the films. This year the number has been doubled. Now each of these films are um, extremely good. And for the selectors, it's always a very challenging task to shortlist these films. Um, among the award winners, out of 21, we had given awards for 18 categories this year. Uh, in the three categories, uh, there were no awards. Uh, because even if the film is best, uh, there's certain ranking, uh, certain scoring, which we uh, look at the minimum scoring. And if you qualify for that only, then you come in uh, that category of awards. Yeah. Uh, Four of the films today uh, that we'll see are award-winning films and one of them is a non-award-winning film but it is was an opening film for our festival, Durga Puja. Yeah? So that's a small uh, change that I would uh, want to uh, share. 
and uh, traditionally uh, this festival is supposed to celebrated on 21st of may uh, that's the world day for uh, cultural uh, di world day for diversity for cultural di uh, dialogue and development and uh, that's a un mandate uh, day uh, of course because of the uh, covid issues we couldn't uh, have both the festivals on our day but uh, next year uh, we are sure that we're going to have it on 21st of may so this events will start in the month of may uh, we'll also open up the call for entries now in the next uh, week 10 days for the next edition so we have enough time in terms of uh, receiving the films and you know evaluating them and all that so that's uh, broadly about the festival we mm, created this property called c2f2 in the campus uh, with the support of DME and uh, Bennett University where we are able to bring the physical audience uh, for the filmmakers uh, the good films the winning films are being shown here and uh, in the coming days we will try to extend this uh, across the country uh, wherein we can go to more campuses and uh, more youth can be involved in uh, these screenings and uh, it's obviously because uh, youth is uh, tomorrow's India and I think um, when you guys see each other's cultures, the world cultures, uh, you guys can all make a significant difference uh, in the country uh, that we live in, in the world that we are living in. And not only just uh, the country and world in terms of geographies, but the whole race of humanity uh, can see a big change. Uh, you can, we can all live more peaceful for a longer period of time. And uh, culture is, I think, one of the best ways to explore, uh, exchange, know more and uh, help grow the humanity. That was the idea behind the festival and we hope that at some point in time we'll achieve this in our lifetimes. And uh, with this note, I want to thank you all for calling me here and uh, seeing the festival. Thanks. Welcome Iphigenia Dimitriou from Greece. She is the director of the first film that we saw today as a part of this program C2F2 in the campus with DME Noida students. Uh, we have Iphigenia with us. Iphigenia, uh, welcome. Hello and welcome. and welcome. We would like to hear from you a few things about the beautiful film that we saw and especially the end shot was so captivating uh, the end shot was so captivating that it remains in our memory um, what was your inspiration to make this short film uh, what kind of challenges you faced etc just uh, if you can speak to us a little bit about it so the filmmaking students here can learn okay Hi. hello and welcome welcome from Greece uh, just before I start to tell you about the inspiration, I wanted uh, to tell you a very a bit about the history of this uh, palace. Uh, this palace is uh, the most uh, emblematic monument, uh, one of the most emblematic monuments in Greece. Uh, it was a castle uh, that lived uh, in the years of the Byzantine uh, era. Uh, that started from the 15th, 5th century till the 14th century, uh, approximately. And uh, apart from uh, his uh, architectural um, value, uh, it has a, also a very uh, important uh, historical and cultural process uh, during these centuries. Because in this castle, they were living uh, uh, people from uh, the empire in Constantinople, now it's called Istanbul in Turkey. Uh, and uh, imagine that uh, uh, the emperor of uh, the Byzantine uh, was also going to this uh, palace um, and uh, as a visitor. 
And in this palace, uh, many people were coexisting of the aristocracy of this era. Uh, artists, scholars, uh, soldiers, prince, uh, the princesses, uh, even the, em the emperor. Uh, so this castle, this castle uh, was, um, sorry, uh, was um, renovated uh, a few years ago. Uh, because it was ruins and uh, the, there was a huge restoration project from the Ministry of Culture, the Greek Ministry of Culture, and they decided to make it a, a, a monument to be uh, that the people can visit. So they wanted to make an exhibition inside. Uh, this exhibition uh, was uh, they decided that it has to be mostly audiovisual because we didn't have a, a lot of objects to show. We had mostly the history uh, from books uh, and uh, drawings. Uh, so we decided to make, to form a big team uh, from architects, archeologists, museologists, and they needed also a director uh, because mostly it was audiovisual. And because I'm also an architect and a director and I specialize in monuments, uh, we formed this team and uh, we had this, uh, we designed this project, an exhibition tour uh, that um, we will show to, uh, the visitors. Uh, the story of uh, this palace, um, okay, through audiovisuals. So uh, part of this project was also to make, to realize a small, uh, a short film, like a teaser to promote um, this uh, exhibition. Uh, so um, we decided to make this short film. And when I went there, now we'll tell about uh, the inspiration of this uh, film. When I first went to this place that is amazing, it's in, in a mountain and it's very, very impressive. Um, I also visited um, a monastery that is next to this monument, that they still leave nuns inside the, this monastery. Uh, these nuns, uh, in the period of the current time, now with the COVID, uh, they started uh, making uh, costumes of, uh, inspired by the era, the Byzantine era. So they started to make a lot of costumes. And when I went there, I saw this wardrobe that was a huge wardrobe with the many, many very nice costumes and I said we have to use them and we have this great monument that's empty we have we have these costumes on the other hand and we have to put life in this um, monument through this video so we found uh, these some actors and some people who were volunteering, of course, because they really liked to be part of this project. And we decided to make this uh, one take shot that is difficult because I don't know if you know what is one take shot. It's when you start shooting uh, till the end and you can't make a cut. Uh, we decided to make to make it like this or that it's more uh, live and more impressive and uh, so we started to roll this video through these um, spaces inside the palace from the um, from the lower apartments through this very narrow stair till the upper apartments and in the end that it's the throne hall and you see the princess uh, getting in this hall 
And this was a very difficult um, process uh, because we had all the time to, to, to do this uh, path without making any cut. So this was difficult, but it was, at the end, when we did it, it was a very nice um, uh, process. I don't know what else do you want me to say. Um, hello? Yeah, that was, um, thank you, Ephigenia. A uh, lot of insights into how you uh, went about uh, uh, making this film. Uh, uh, we have any questions from the audience? If yes, we can take the question. In fact, this was a great uh, in, uh, initiative. Uh, such films uh, contribute a lot uh, to enhance the culture, uh, to restore those kind of architectural wonders that are there, which exist. And uh, what your effort is uh, tremendous. We really appreciate and value. And uh, we hope that we will see more such films from you in the coming days. Any questions for her? All right. Uh, you have something, sir? No. So we have one of our jury members also as a part of this uh, discussion, Mr. Ramesh Tegwani. Uh, I can request Mr. Ramesh Tegwani to say a few words. Ramesh ji? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. You know, uh, I think um, Emilio said it all. You know, what happens is this, that whenever we are looking at things, or sometimes even we walk around, you know, uh, in Mumbai. Suppose we, we walk around and suddenly we, we see a building. Now, all across from my house, all the way to the railway station, there's a whole lot of heritage buildings that are there. Now, you have taken this palace and used it as a backdrop also to display the costume. Yes. You know, it's, it's such a good idea, you know. I mean, if you were to just show architecture without any light in uh, life in it, you know, it would be quite boring and we wouldn't know what to say and what would you tell us? I mean, how do you keep looking at a wall, a wall, a wall, a wall? But when you compare it with the humans that are there, you know the size and then you bring in certain kind of lighting, you know, which you've done a lot of uh, natural light over here in that I, I don't think you've used any uh, artificial lighting in this but these things become important whenever you're you know trying to think of a visual I mean right now when you're looking at me I have made a mistake in putting the lighting in my place you know I made it look bright but today light has a frequency when you had in the good old days you had tube lights it had certain frequencies that did not match with your television and your television would get a black line. Or if somebody tried to shoot a television screen, it would, you know, create a black line. But now coming back to the films that we have, I think uh, for the students of DME, over the next few years, I mean, not next few years, now to forever, but over the, you know, tomorrow and another, you will be seeing certain films that are the winning films of uh, C2F2. These films have come from all over, you know, the world. Today, we have a Greek filmmaker. I mean, try and understand the architecture of Greece. Try and understand what Greece is all about. I mean, Alexander was a Greek. We I mean, plan to remember that. And uh, our history of India is connected with this. Now, uh, what is called Olympics started in Greece. So there is a lot of connection that is there. Emilio, can you tell us something about Greece? Hello? 
प्रवीण जी इनसे जरा पूछे कि हाय एफ जनिया वी वांट टू नो समथिंग अबाउट ग्रेस फ्रॉम यू ऑन मी फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स सर इज आस्किंग फ्रॉम स्टूडेंट्स हां सर फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट्स ओके स्टूडेंट्स what 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 have they picked up from the film when they saw this film what did they pick up who, see what happens volu- is who can come who can volunteer come and because there there's one small done? there's one small uh, item that i would like to share with the students the only stupid question is a one that you have not asked because it happens suddenly after some time you realize oh my god i should have asked ask it nobody is going to laugh at you and even if they laugh at you it does not matter but it is important that when you when you see a film it should stir some questions in you okay somebody has made a film a film is made from the point of view of a person today if you hold if you take your camera and hold your mobile like i would yeah now if i aim it at somebody or if i'm aiming at somebody even if you take a selfie you will take it from one angle or the other why because you like your face from a particular angle so everything today from the filmmaker's point of view you are seeing a palace in which there are you know you can see outfits so when you are seeing these films try and see some things that are typical of the country that has given the film try and do a little googling as to what else you can uh, get from greece you know the filmmaker try and google what the person has does you know yesterday i got a certificate from somebody where they had one you know a london on not a london book of records that they have won so many awards and so many festivals they have entered and i didn't know about the film at all so today you have this film it's a 5 minute film to tell a story in 1 minute to tell a story in 5 minutes to tell a story in half an hour i mean it all depends now in half an hour what would you say that you cannot say in 1 hour so this is a film about a palace its people the outfits and here she came and told you that you have a recording of this uh film uh sorry the session of ours try and review it and see if you can uh, you know see that something that you missed out for us as part of a jury it becomes difficult it becomes difficult sometimes because this is not you know you watch a film we do not watch these films as you know oh, what a fantastic film this is no what is the story that the film is telling first thing you look at it is what is the story that the film is telling me what is in this film that is similar to my country what is this film that is similar to the world or what is typical of that country does this film make you want to go to the palace and see it and this is important like try and remember greece is one very tiny country it's a very tiny country it has given us mythology all right it is given iliad to us so the kind of epics that they have given like a ramayana and mahabharat greece is given us greece has given us these gods on mount vesuvius this is what greece is all about and this is what it should you know how once you start in billiard you you hit one ball and you get all the other balls bouncing all over and suddenly some and this is where this film small i mean i i i i was having a chat about this film with uh, mr nagra because we also have a sh- section of shorts and why this film was entered for competition you know i didn't it was just on the border line of uh, eligibility for competition and it was entered for competition i'm sure the filmmaker when they tried to do that they didn't want it you know entered in shorts and disappear for the viewing but they entered it and it won an award and this is where you know i congratulate you know the winner any more questions now if you are inspired please tell me 
Thank you. I have finished. Amrish sir. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to point out this uh, with Ramesh was also uh, mentioning uh, that the greatest part of this uh, palace of Mistra was uh, its camera work. The your voice, sir. Your voice is a bit low. Okay, so I'm pointing out this that the best part, according to me, of uh, this film, uh, Palace of Mistra, was its camera. Uh, the way it the, the film opened and the way the film closed, and the last shot particularly was amazing. And uh, uh, this film showed as to how, in a very very less time it is possible to establish a subject. You need not to make a 10 minute or 20 minutes film, even in one minute, whatever you want to communicate, that is possible to communicate. And then obviously when we talk about culture or when we talk about the, the heritage, and so we can find this, that even if we are promoting culture, promoting tourism, so uh, if we are making such kind of films to, to project a country, like Greece is full of uh, uh, such kind of heritage, the same is the case is uh, uh, in India. So if such kind of films, if there are I mean, 20 places identified in a country, 30 places identified, and this one one minute film is made on each of the, the cultural heritage, that could be the best way to project a country's culture. And uh, the director, uh, Iphigenia, uh, definitely uh, deserve kudos uh, for making such kind of film. Thank you. Thank you, Iphigenia, for joining us all the way from Greece. It's uh, been a pleasure to have you with us and hope we will meet again in the future sessions, in the future interactions and the future editions. Thank you very much from all my heart. It's a great honor, really. Thank you very much for all these good things you told me. Thank you. Congratulations, face to face. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations also for your festival and for all this effort with the university. It's an amazing uh, work. Thank you. Let's welcome Ms. Uh, Shivani Sokhi. She is the executive producer of uh, the film that we saw recently, The Saviour, Brigadier Pritam Singh. She will talk about the film and also you can ask questions uh, to her, please. Namaskar, aap sabko. Yeah, hello everyone, and this is Shivani Soki. You have just seen uh, our docudrama, The Savior, and uh, uh, I think you must be having a lot of questions and a uh, lot of queries regarding the. Uh, this is a uh, first of all, I would like to say this is an investigative uh, film you have seen. Uh, so, it's a lot of which is not uh, commercial. So, it was the real picture, whatever uh, you have seen, whatever uh, Mr. Brigadier, uh, uh, Brigadier Pritam Singh has faced at that moment. So, I'm just, uh, it's an open session for you, everyone. So, do let me know what is the questions, uh, because this is a stage where, yeah, please. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, I wanted to ask you one thing. When we were in Japan, we were running away from Japan, Malayala, where did the concept of food come from? And where did they come from? When they were going to the train, they made fake documents, but where did they come from? Where did they come from? And after that, the concept of food came from 6 months. Why did they come from the jungle? Why did they come from the jungle? See, at that time, they covered 3,000 miles in 6 months. So they have mentioned it. वैसे तो ये this is the kind of investigation the team has done. But the thing is that वो बहुत सारे villages छोटी-छोटी जगह बीच में पड़ती थी. और food और ये बहुत ज़्यादा ऐसा concept नहीं होता था because wherever you go you can see you can find something they can eat because they that was a fight survival fight. 
for them right because they are not they just want to make it survive themselves so jahan unhe jo bhi mil raha tha they are making it because they are a team of three people jahan se jo arrange hota tha even the money because lot of people were there who knew that ki they are uh, they are uh, that is we can call it prisoner of war right so that is दिस इज़ वेरी डेडली कॉन्सेप्ट इफ़ यू विल रीड अबाउट दैट सो अगर किसी को पता लगता था तो डेफिनेटली कुछ लोग होते हैं नरम दिल दे यूज टू हेल्प दैम एज वेल एंड इट दिस आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट नाइनटीन फोर्टी थ्री सो दैट वॉज बिकॉज उस टाइम पे पैसा एंड दिस फूड इफ अवेलेबल पीपल नोट यूज टू सेल इट दे यूज टू गिव इट सबसे पहले तो काफ़ी अच्छी मूवी थी और हमने प्रीतम सिंह के बारे में मतलब आगे पैसे पहले पढ़ा भी नहीं था तो आ, लेकिन मुझे ये पूछना था कि जब हम डॉक्यू ड्रामा कह रहे हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं हमें एक बिलीव होता है कि जो हम देख रहे हैं वो सच है और आ, यही सोच के हमने ये मूवी देखी तो कहीं ना कहीं लेकिन ऐसा लगा कि मूवी ना एक साइड पर चली गई और दूसरी तरफ की जो चीज़ें वो दिखाई नहीं दी क्योंकि हमने लास्ट में फंसाने की बात बोली कि उन्हें और फिर उनके साथ काफ़ी लोग आए कि ऐसा नहीं था जो हुआ वो गलत हुआ तो दूसरी तरफ का जो एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू है वो देखने को नहीं मिला स्टोरी में ओके आई विल टेक इट दिस पॉइंट बिकॉज ये एक uh, सबसे पहले हमने ये दिखाना था कि देर वॉज अ पर्सन ब्रिगेडियर प्रीतम सिंह हु हैज़ मेड सो मच सेक्रीफाइस फॉर हिज कंट्री राइट और uh, उनका जो मोटिव था वो उन्होंने उस टाइम तक उन्हें भी नहीं पता था उनके साथ ये होगा इफ हैज़ ही हैज़ बिन नोन दैट ही हैज़ बिन कोर्ट मार्शल सो दैट दैट विल बी कॉन्सेप्ट बट उनके अंदर जो देशभक्ति का जो जज्बा था वो हमने दिखाने की कोशिश की है and after happening all this because आप जो ये बोल रहे हैं दूसरा वाला पार्ट बिकॉज दिस इज़ अ वी हैव टू कवर एवरी थिंग आई थिंक अभी भी आप लोगों के लिए इट वॉज ए एटी मिनट सो उससे ज़्यादा हो जाता है वील ट्राई टू शो दैट दैट पार्ट एज वेल बट बिकॉज वैन वी मेड इट वी नेवर थाट ऑफ कि दिस डॉक्यूमेंट्री और डॉक्यू ड्रामा विल टेक अनदर लेवल एंड दिस विल गेट सो मैनी अप्रिशिएशन फ्रॉम द पीपल फ्रॉम द ज्यूरी मेम्बर्स एंड ऑल एंड नाउ वी विल ट्राई टू मेक अ फीचर फिल्म एज वेल राइट सो क्लियर योर कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन जो नहीं दिखा पाए उसको दिखाने की कोशिश करेंगे और uh, मैं बताना चाहूँ इन सब के बावजूद भी उनका बेटा भी आज आर्मी में है सो दिस दिस दीज आर द पीपल जिन्होंने उस 1947 में जो सेक्रीफाइस किया था और बहुत खुशी की बात है हमने अभी पन, uh, कल ही हमने जो है आज़ादी के अपने पचहत्तर वर्ष पूरे किए हैं और दिस इज़ द राइट टाइम टू शो यू टू लाइक हु हैज सेक्रीफाइस फॉर एस Uh, see, whenever we make a film, uh, whether it's a feature film or a docu drama or documentary, there are two uh, parts which are important. One is the content part or the concept part or the idea part, and then the rest is the whole process of film making as to how the film is uh, being made. Now, uh, from where this concept generated in your mind that there is some such thing on which uh, some documentary or docu drama can be made? uh thank you so much for this question sir because uh, even i am not the right person to give you the right answer for that because that was our very respected mr karan bhi cbi sir who is the producer of this movie uh, for this uh, docu drama so uh, he is also from that background and unke wo bahut sare aise heroes ko real heroes ko jante the ya unke jo parivar mein is tarah ki stories discuss ki jati thi realities discuss ki jati thi so he had a dream of showing uh, through cinema like he is not a person from cinema but he through cinema we can show so many thing like Ra rajesh ji Ra rakesh ji just said who is a jury uh, a member he said ki aapko koi bhi cheez hoti hai ek uh, aapko us cheez ko samajhna chahiye wo kya batana cha rahi hai any content because jab kisi ne banaya hai there is there is a motive behind that either it's a 1 minute 5 minutes half an hour or 80 minute or 2 uh, hour so there is there is something which they want to tell agar hamare paas ek bachcha bhi aata hai so we have to put some concentration agar shor mein se aa rahe kya keh rahe ho so this is the concentration we need i think right ki kya kehna ja rahi hai story or why this is so important so agar aap usko uh, usi tarah tarike se dekhoge you will learn so many things things through that aur yahi concept tha ki is uh, jo aapne dekha aapne last mein dekha he has been court martial uh, jo hum ye ye hum is cheez pe abhi koi bhi uh, comment ya wo statement nahi dena chahenge because this was the reality but still we are fighting for his uh, to restore his honor as well तो ये एक इन्वेस्टिगेशन था हमारी तरफ से भी टू शो द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया कि दिस हैज़ हैपन एंड दिस आर आर रियल हीरोज इसमें बहुत सारे इवन बाबा मेहर सिंह इज देयर यू लर्न द पर्सन हु जिन्होंने डकोता लैंड किया था वहाँ पे सो दे आर लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल दे आर नॉट इज नॉट ओनली द वन लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर देयर जो सुपर हीरोज़ हैं 
दे आर द सुपर हीरोज ऑफ आवर कंट्री सो हमारी कोशिश रहेगी कि हम इसी तरह की चीज़ें बनाकर आप लोगों को दिखाते रहें और आपको भूलने ना दें Yeah, my uh, second question is about the filmmaking aspect. Uh, since it's a docudrama, so there are two major components in this. One is the documentary aspect, meaning thereby that the documents which you needed to make this film from the archives or from libraries or uh, from some uh, personal uh, uh, things from somebody. So that is one. How did you manage that all? That is one. to as far as the docudrama part is concerned how much did you reconstruct and uh, what were the difficulties that you were facing while uh, reconstructing those things uh, right sir uh, as we see when we uh, talk about cinema film production ya video production so these comes in three parts uh, fourth part i will discuss later on that is three p's i always say this is the pre production production and post production सो आपका लॉर्ड ऑफ वर्क हैज़ बिन डन इन द प्री प्रोडक्शन पार्ट ताकि जो आप प्रोडक्शन में है जो आप डिफ़िकल्टीज़ फेस कर सकते हैं उस चीज़ की सारी डिस्कशन जो है प्री प्रोडक्शन में हो जानी चाहिए तो इट टेक्स लॉर्ड ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज हमारा ये डॉक्यू ड्रामा बिकॉज इट वॉज एक हिस्ट्री बेस था तो हमें बहुत सारी चीज़ें हैं जो वी नीड टू रीड गो थ्रू द हिस्ट्री एज वेल और रियल आपने फुटेज में देखे हैं तो एवन इवन द एम सीज एंड ऑल जो उन्हें मिल्ट्री क्रॉस मिला एंड दियर रियल पिक्चर्स ऑफ दीज पीपल तो उस चीज़ को इकट्ठा करना इट टेक्स लॉट ऑफ टाइम एंड एफर्ट और कोई भी चीज़ बनाने के लिए बहुत सारा टाइम बनाने से ज़्यादा उसकी प्री प्रोडक्शन में लगता है सो so, uh, और उसके दौरान और कहाँ पे चीज़ बिकॉज एवरी थिंग कैन यू कैन नॉट पुट यू हैव टू टेक सर्टन परमीशन सो वी हैव ऑल द परमीशन टू शो इट so that is how it works because you cannot just uh, download it from uh, net or google or whatever you want but you need certain uh, uh, permissions from the government of india some sometimes so these are the permission you have to take lot of uh, process i think you will learn uh, in your schooling or uh, in your courses as well ki kahan se kya hota hai so and uh, sir is uh, this thing i know how i asked this question so always uh, ask your seniors and the people your teachers so how it works so this is a very good question ki it's not easy to show it like this so we have done a lot of homework or a lot of research in that right um, i have a doubt it's from the research point of view firstly like how long did the research take regarding the documentary and secondly while do, uh, doing the research you might have gone to many people heard their stories but jitne they like the number of word of mouth is there the more different stories are there so how do you come up with the apt fact and uh, how do you come up uh, with a fact checking uh, part so uh, जब इस तरह के कंटेंट बनते हैं ये कहीं ना कहीं किसी के दिमाग में था इट ऑलवेज कम विद विद एन आइडिया राइट सो इट वाज एन आइडिया फ्रॉम आर लाइक प्रोड्यूसर मिस्टर करण वी सी ही डिस्कस विद आर वेरी गुड डायरेक्टर मिस्टर परमजीत सिंह कोटू जी तो uh, एक ये मैं इसी पर्टिकुलर प्रोजेक्ट के लिए बात कर रही हूँ तो uh, एक आइडिया पहले डिस्कस किया जाता है कि हाउ इट विल गो मतलब उस टाइम पे नहीं होता है कि देन कि दैट दैट वर्ड वी वांट टू शो टू द वर्ल्ड और टू टू द जनरेशंस सो इसके बाद जब हम रिसर्च करने लगते हैं तो इवन आई हैव अ बुक एज वेल यू कैन रीड अ बुक द सेवियर आई आई शो यू यू कैन गेट इट फ्रॉम द अमेजॉन एज वेल आई एम कैरिंग वन दिस इज फ्रॉम द सेम टीम वी हैव रिटर्न अ बुक एज वेल सो आपको इस रिसर्च के प्रोसेस के लिए यू एक्चुअली गेट अ टीम इन दैट यू हैव टू गो देयर जिसे रेकी बोला जाता है यू नो दैट यू हैव टू गो देर यू हैव टू स्टे समाइम यू हैव टू नोट ईच एंड एवरी डिटेल एंड देन बिकॉज इसमें इवन द आर्मी पीपल आर देयर सो यू हैव टू मेक नोट्स ऑन दैट एंड जब उसको रिकलेक्ट करके दैट इज वट एज ए प्री प्रोडक्शन इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट सो इट ऑल्सो कम्स विद द रिसर्च तो इट टेक्स लाइक योर समाइम आप एक अच्छी चीज़ बनने के लिए आपने देखा होगा ये सालों भी लग जाते हैं और इट कम्स विद द आइडिया वो आइडिया शायद एक दिन में नहीं आया होगा उन्हें सो दे वॉज समथिंग उनको दिमाग में था कि ये चीज़ करनी है अब वैन यू सी मे बी इफ यू आर फ्रॉम दिस थिंग यू एवरीबडी मस्ट बी हैविंग सम विजन सो आर विजन इज टू शो दैट एनी थिंग एल्स गुड आफ्टरनून मैम मैम एक चीज़ मुझे पूछनी थी जब लास्ट में उनके कोर्ट मार्शल होने की बात हुई तो काफ़ी सारी चीज़ें लोगों ने ऐसे बाइट्स दिए जो कि गवर्नमेंट के अगेंस्ट जा रहे थे और उस टाइम पे कि जो गवर्नमेंट का सबसे प्रोमिनेंट फेस था वो जवाहरलाल नेहरू तो ये फिल्म मेकर के लिए काफ़ी ऐसा कंटेंट मीडिया 
के थ्रू लाना इज इन डिट अ बिट रिस्की मतलब क्योंकि लोगों के लिए उनका पर्स्पेक्टिव थोड़ा अलग है पॉजिटिव वे में फिर वो कुछ ऐसी चीज़ सुनते हैं तो इज इन डिट अ बिट रिस्की टू शो इट लाइक राइट इवन यू हैव सीन फ्यू फीचर फिल्म एज वेल इसी उसमें शायद आई विल नॉट नेम इट यू नो दैट बट रियालिटी इज़ रियालिटी राइट दैट इज़ वाई दिस इज़ अ इन्वेस्टिगेशन सो एंड वी हैव टू शो इट द राइट इन्वेस्टिगेशन वी कैन नॉट मैन इट टू एनी अदर वे बिकॉज आर दैट इज़ वाई द होल रिसर्च इज ऑन दैट बेस इज ऑनली टू शो यू द रियालिटी हेलो एक्चुअली फिल्म काफ़ी अच्छी थी इंटरेस्टिंग थी जो आपने भी इसका आंसर दिया जब हम इन्वेस्टिगेटिव uh, फिल्म की बात कर रहे हैं कि हमने इसमें इन्वेस्टिगेशन किया है तो ऑब्वियसली उसमें जन, कोई भी पॉलिटिशियन हो या कोई भी हो वो अपने आप कहीं ना कहीं जब इस तरह की फिल्म हम बनाते हैं रिस्क लेके ही बनाते हैं मैं यहाँ पर केवल ये कहना चाह रही थी कि जब आपने ये फिल्म बनाई तो इसमें कितना परसेंट हमने फुटेज लिया है और कितना हमने लाइव शूट किया है एक चीज़ ये दूसरा ये कि जब हमने ये फिल्म बनाई तो उसमें लगभग कितने घंटे का शूट था और उसके बाद आफ्टर एडिटिंग जो टाइम है वो हमें पता है फिल्म का लेकिन कितने घंटे का शूट था और कितना टाइम एडिटिंग में लगा मैम आई एम एग्जीक्यूटिव प्रोड्यूसर फॉर दिस सो आई कैन नॉट मैंशन यू एज द एग्जैक्ट टाइमिंग एंड ऑल बट डेफिनेटली आई विल गिव यू द डाटा ऑन दैट बिकॉज दिस इज़ नॉट द राइट आई फाइल से कि दिस मच आर्स बट या इट टुक्स लाइक थ्री मंथ्स फॉर दैट सो रफली आई आई एल मैंशन दैट बिकॉज रिसर्च हैज़ बिन डन अर्लियर और और जितने भी फुटेजेस हैं वो मिक्स एंड मैच की गई हैं आप देखो कुछ फुटेजेस को हमने रिपीट भी किया है सो so, अगर इसमें देखा जाए आई थिंक टेन टू फिफ्टीन मिनट्स इस रॉ फुटेजेस जो ओल्ड फुटेजेस हैं बाकी हैज़ बिन शूर शॉर्ट एंड कुछ उसमें है जो इट्स इट्स यू कैन से जो लाइव हम लोगों ने उनके सेशंस लिए थे uh, अपने आर्मी पीपल के दैट इज़ द डिफरेंट पार्ट सो ये तीन पार्ट्स में चलता है एक्चुअली या यहाँ एक जो प्रिया का शायद क्वेश्चन था कि आपने नेगेटिव पार्ट क्यों नहीं दिखाया अदर साइड क्यों नहीं दिखाया तो अदर साइड हम क्यों दिखाएंगे जब हम एक फोकस्ड फिल्म बना रहे हैं और किसी पर्टिकुलर पर्सन पे बना रहे हैं तो हम सिर्फ उसी पे फोकस करेंगे हम अदर साइड नहीं दिखा सकते फिर तो आपकी फिल्म जस्टिस नहीं कर पाएगी अगर आप दोनों पार्ट दिखाएंगे तो आप अपनी फिल्म को जस्टिस कैसे देंगे हाँ बिल्कुल in fact i mean since this point has been raised i did not intervene that time if we talk about documentary and we simply look uh, into the very very clear hard definition of documentary it simply portrayal whatever is there so uh, and whenever a documentary is made it is always the director's point of view it's not a news analysis it's uh, not an attempt to create a balance that is uh, side ko thoda sa dikhana hai thoda sa us side ko dikhana hai it's always the director's point of view right there may be another director making a documentary on the same subject showing a contrary point of view but then that will be that director's point of view right so whenever a filmmaker a director decides that a film is to be made on preetam singh to show his heroism to show his contribution to show that uh, whatever uh, was possible uh, was expected to be done by him at that point of time and whatever injustice was meted to him so it the, in the focus the preetam singh and his work and his contribution is there so there can no other side in such a case there is always one side in a documentary particularly the kind of subject which was being dealt with in this document and i'll add one point the name is the savior he said 40000 refugees so name also says the same thing that's what we wanted to show you so there is always what like content wants to say that it wants to say he saved the those people those refugees of our country सो so, अगर आप इस चीज़ से जुड़ेंगे और रिसर्च करेंगे ये बिंग लाइक बिंग अ स्टूडेंट एंड फॉर अस एज वेल फॉर आर कंट्री इट विल बी अ रियली अ ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर एज वेल
थैंक यू सो मच मतलब इतना अच्छा फिल्म था कि हम सबको समझ आया और शायद रिसर्च अभी शायद आप अब जब क्वेश्चनिंग कर रहे हैं आई थिंक दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड मच बेटर बिकॉज ये बहुत जरूरी होता है कि आप अपने क्वेश्चन जरूर रखें और हम जहाँ तक हो सके उस चीज़ का आंसर आप लोगों को दें थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन इट वॉज रियली नाइस हैविंग यू directors of our films from C2F2 uh, one of them is award winning film steps of freedom uh, second one uh, is an oh, was an opening film of the festival on uh, durga puja festival uh, we have both distinguished directors with us uh, we had screenings today as a part of this program called C2F2 in the campus where we are taking the best films from C2F2 to various academic institutions and universities Uh, we have good number of uh, media students from journalism and mass communications and uh, they have all watched the films they have enjoyed the films now we would like to speak to each of the director uh, briefly uh, first let me uh, come to ruan and uh, talk to him about his experiences uh, in this in making this film his inspiration his challenges and uh, things that he would like to share with us for our young students to learn both from a technical perspective and from the larger perspective of the dance and the culture over to you ruan well um um hello and um thank you for for including me in this conversation it's an absolute honor to be here with you all and um uh I've, I said this at the awards as well that that really I'm always embarrassed coming to these things because there really should be 200 people here um, because I didn't make this film on my own um, I made it with an uh, incredible team and um, I mean if you just think there's 50 60 dancers just just them and really the film is their film right it's not our film um, and then there's the musicians how many musicians played all that music in every scene and all the musicians then who played the soundtrack and then there's all the production team who made it was a complicated production because of covid we shot during covid um so there's about 15 people there who without whom i mean they 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 planned it logistics they got everybody there they sorted it all out um and then there's the camera crew and the sound crews and so essentially there should be 200 people here not just me right so and i think as media students you all understand that maybe better than uh, so probably i didn't need to say it um um one of the things i was thinking of was that we shot this during covid and it's one of the reasons why so many scenes are outdoors right because we 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 realized quickly enough that if we were indoors we we people would be too close to each other and there would be a risk of infection and we probably wouldn't have been allowed to do it anyway so we quickly made a decision even though ireland it rains an awful lot in ireland we just made a decision we'll gamble and shoot everything outdoors right so um and the other thing you'll notice we had much bigger dance scenes in mind but because of covid we started reducing them down to just two or three or four people um or else putting families together so so we're cheating all the time and uh, or else shooting with angles so we put our cameras in particular positions that make it look as if people are close together but actually they're you know five or 10 meters apart um So anyway that's covid so so it's a covid film and hopefully it doesn't feel like a covid film um and uh, I'd I'd be really interested to know what what some of the students thought about it and and then I could talk some more about it if you like Thanks Ron it uh, it's a brilliantly shot film the locations the um, stunning visuals the camera angles all of it uh, everybody is very excited and while watching the film I could see the legs tapping of many of the students over here and it was quite interesting so the the, the whole musical experience that they've had uh, maybe you can talk about each of these uh, elements in little more detail than what i'm explaining you well i i'd love to so the 
the, the way we filmed it, I mean, I mean, we, we, we film on, on really high end cameras. We, we always are shooting two or three cameras at any one point. So um, we on this, I think we used Sony S6s and Sony S7s um, and also a little S3, depending. So the S3 would be on a on a gimbal. Uh, so we don't use we don't use a steady cam, but to get those steady cam moves, we just use a small little gimbal setup. Um, which for any of you've probably seen them, it's just a stick with a very complex gimbal on top, which allows the camera to steady. And then we put a little very small SLR, but it shoots 4K in slow motion. So it's really, really high quality. And it'll be a Sony because that means we can grade it to match the other Sony cameras that we have. But a lot of the filming then is done, done on a drone. So the steady, the massive crane shots and tracking shots are on a drone. And they're shot by an amazing um, guy called Colm Hogan that I've been working with and Roman Bavansky, who's a Ukrainian. And the pair of them have this amazing team um, together where they, where they can really put a drone anywhere. So they've shot Terminator films, some of the latest Terminator films that do the drone work on that. So they're really skilled. And it means that, that we can think of like tracking shots that would have been impossible up until five years ago, where we're tracking on the top of the mountain, for example, early on, we're doing 150 foot tracks. Yeah, so tracking shot, the camera's literally staying at the same level as the dancers. But of course, we're on top of a mountain, so the camera's outside with nothing underneath it. It looks like it's tracking across the ground, but it isn't. It's got you know, sheer drop of several hundred feet underneath it. Um, and it's on a it's on a, a 70 mil lens, not a wide lens. So it means we can get very, very close to the action. Um, so so we're, 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 we're using, I suppose, the most modern technology to get extraordinary shots, but very simply. I mean, a shot like that took us, you know, 15, 20 minutes to shoot it three, four times from both angles. And, and it's done. It's amazing how modern technology can can allow us to do things which before that would have, would have taken you know days to plan and would have needed a, a tracks and a big crane and all sorts of things. Um, so uh, the music is written by a guy called Colin McAnumbra, who's a, a wonderful uh, modern young Irish musician. And he's not a traditional Irish musician, but he was reared in a family of traditional Irish music, music, musicians. So he understands it very well, um, but his own his own music is quite postmodern, quite modern, quite quite rock sometimes. So so he's come at traditional Irish music with from inside, but also from outside. And so the soundtrack has got that edge, hopefully, that people will feel it's it's not it's not too old school traditional Irish music, right? But of course, Riverdance then. Which, which is one of the reasons we made the film. You know, this has, has this amazing musical soundtrack written by Bill Whelan. So we had to bring brilliant music to this project. Um, and the story of how Irish dance developed and how Irish culture developed is very much embedded in that music, isn't it? Because, because we, were, we were a very traditional, very poor country um, uh, under British rule up until about you know, the early, the early part of the 1900s of the 20th century. And then we began to change after we got independence and slowly the music and the dance changed as well. And we learned about other cultures in the world. We learned about other music in the world. And, you know, I suppose when jazz comes in and rock comes in, that changes Irish music. So the music that you heard in the documentary, we felt we wanted to have a, to have a modern take on Irish music, not, not the traditional take on Irish music. So, so that's, uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that, that's great. In fact, in one of the conversations in the film, um, into one of the interviewers uh, speaks about a very interesting part. They say, it says that uh, you can take away anything from the man, but not the way uh, you, he sings and dances and you know. So you really have gone through in, in, in depth of research, you give references of, you know, historical references of uh, slavery and similarities and differences. Maybe um, some of the things you can talk about uh, the research part in making this film and what all kind of you know inputs you have taken, where all the inputs you have taken, how you have applied them, and uh, then finally, you know, what came out of it. Uh, throw some light on that, please. And after but, that, uh, I'll um, request uh, uh, Professor Amrish Saxena to ask one question to you, maybe. 
Brilliant, thank you. Um, I'm just, isn't the miracle of modern technology amazing that we can have this conversation across this huge distance? And it's wonderful that you've shared, that you've watched this film. I, I'm, I, I can't tell you how exciting and moved uh, uh, we all are over here about, about that. And, um, and, and if you think of the research, I mean, the story, the story is a new one for Irish audience. We, we didn't know this history, so, so we had to discover it. And there's one book I read 20, 30 years ago called To Hell or Barbados. And it was a, it was a very controversial book at the time because it suggested that Irish people had been slaves on British plantations, sugar plantations in Barbados. And people said, nonsense, this is not true. And, and also very importantly, to suggest that the Irish were slaves it diminishes the experience of the African slaves who, who really had, had a, a time which is so much more appalling than anything the Irish experienced, okay? It's very important, and we say that in the documentary, but it's very important to state that um, um, because there are certain uh, parts of the Irish diaspora in America, particularly, who would, uh, who are, who can be quite, perhaps, not, not to dance around it, they can be very racist towards their African-American cousins. Um, and so they use that kind of narrative for the wrong purposes. So that's why I just have to state that. But I read this book and it got me thinking and I was like, I wonder, I wonder what was that? And, and in, the, in, the, in the intervening 20 or 30 years, the thesis in the book had been proven to be correct. And in fact, it had been found that much more Irish had gone over as indentured servants to Barbados than had ever been thought before. And that got me thinking, well, well, that would, might, might explain perhaps why there's this amazing rhythmical sense to Irish dance and even some music. So I started looking into that. Now it took me seven years to figure this out. So for all you students who want to make a film, um, don't be afraid to have an idea and, and let it just percolate, right? While you're making other things, yeah? Obviously I didn't, I don't, no one paid me for seven years to figure this out. It was just an idea I had. Um, but, but amazingly, gradually, I came across one piece and another piece and another piece of research um, that, you know, other incredible academics had done um, into this. And it began to become clear that, yes, you could build a case that suggested that something was planted in, uh, something changed in the way that the Irish danced in Barbados and in Virginia and in America. They brought one dance with them, but when they, when they're, children and their children's children left that part of the world and went north in America, they were dancing differently. They had an American, an African angle to their dance. Um, so that was the beginning of the thesis and we built it and built it and built it after that. But I love that idea that that something I read 30 years ago, then seven years ago began to go in my head and then for seven years I researched it and then eventually you get this story that comes out of it, which is validated by some great historians. That's beautiful, beautiful to hear that. And what a conviction, uh, what a conviction of the idea, what a commitment to this uh, seed that has been planted seven years back and now it uh, became a full grown tree mm. and fruits we can see out, you know, of this. Uh, so we have um, with us uh, Professor Amrish Saxena. He heads uh, DME uh, Media School here. It's one of the most prominent media schools in um, Delhi, the capital of uh, India. Uh, we have a lot of his students here. Uh, I would like to give the mic to him and um, he would like to speak to you briefly on this. Mm. Uh, so my con congratulations to you for making such a, such a nice film. It was so good visually. Uh, the camera was so good. The music was so good. And uh, on top of everything, the sound was amazing. Mm -hmm. So my question, my query to you is because on uh, many locations, outdoor, outdoor locations you were using. Uh, so when you were using the outdoor locations and uh, were filming the dance and the music, then obviously you would have matched that music uh, in the studio so that the right kind of sound can be heard when we as a viewer are watching the film. So how did you manage that exercise, uh, matching the music with the outdoor locations and uh, doing it in the studios? Oh, wow. That's a, thank you for that question. Yeah, that's, and thank you for noticing. Um, so 
wow, how do we begin? Um, so what, what, th there's a lot of different elements. I mean, in terms of making the soundtrack feel like it is live within the scenes, myself and, the, and Colin McAnumra, the, the, who wrote it, have decided way in advance what each piece of music could be. Now, in, in Irish music, it's the same in Indian classical music or uh, music that you would know um, more way better than Irish music, but you, you, you do have certain patterns of, uh, in a music. So the rhythm would be the same, even though the, the, the melody would be completely different, the structure might be completely different, but the pattern, the rhythm is going to be the same. So, so it could be 4-4 four, four time or 4-6 time or 6-8 time. And so what Colm and I would decide is, well, this should be a polka, which is a type of Irish jig and it would be in 6-8 time. So he would then give me a really basic right? And that's it. And that we would then bring to location and pump out on these huge speakers so the dancers are dancing to that. And then later, he can then get rid of that and he can add anything as long as it has the tuck, the tuck, the tuck, the tuck. He can add anything at all as long as it has that beat and the, the, the dancers will be in sync. Um, so the, another thing we did was, now, now so that, that example suggests that we have thought really, really deeply about the music and the sound, haven't we, from the very, very beginning. We've also, all of the natural sound that you hear of the waves and the wind and all, that's all added in post. It's all added in afterwards, like a, like a movie. Um, we, we don't even use, we hardly bring a sound man with us anywhere now. Um, I used to always have them, but now they're only there for interview days. No, no, no sound man. So add all the sound in post, um, which, is, which is cheating, but it means you're controlling it and it's of the finest quality. And then there's that amazing thing of the Irish dancing on these, on the, plat, on the platforms, right? So we, we, we have the, the dancers have steel toes caps and we put mics inside those little boxes that they're dancing on. So you get this amazing sound from those. And Morgan Bullock in New York, the young um, African-American girl, she, hers was, was put on a manhole cover. So if you could go back, you probably won't be able to hear, it was only five minutes in, but there's this amazing sound out of her shoes, which is, which is bubba da bubba da, but it also, it also has got this steel thing, which is the box hitting the man cover underneath. So, so that sense of rhythm and real live rhythm was, a, was another important part. So we close mic'd all of the shoes on location, um, wherever they were. So and we, 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 we did them separately with no music. So we would put a music into, their, into a headphone in their ear for one set of filming so we could get clean sound on their feet. Um, and then all the rest of us, we would just go live with the big speakers. So that, that's some of the tricks is what we did. Yeah, but the, the, this was really, really a very effective uh, experiment that you did and the sound was coming really too good. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, any questions from the students? Yeah, us. Uh, good evening, sir. Actually, I have three questions. Uh, one, how much time did it take to finally produce the film? And two, what, was it hard on the pockets? Because uh, we can see a lot of dancers and outdoor shoots must have cost, cost a lot. How did you manage the budget? Yeah, okay. Well, well, we, we, we started, uh, funny enough, at a, a COVID story again. We, we were supposed to shoot it uh, two, 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 two and a half years ago, and then suddenly COVID broke. And... And I have this really, really awful feeling that we're going to lose the funding. And sure enough, because we had 10, to answer your second question, we had, we had 10 different funding partners. Um, and we had to you know, beg a little bit of money from one, beg money from another, and slowly we built the budget up. So RTE, with the Irish National Broadcaster, they just put in a tenth of the budget. And then we gradually went to find other tenths from other people as we went along. Um, but um, um, but yes, yeah, so 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 what happened when COVID broke was several funders just lost interest because there was they were going you'll never be able to film a dance documentary in the middle of COVID. Um, so myself and the producer Patricia Carroll decided we would just start anyway um, because if we were started even without the money, we it might be harder for people to say no. 
because we they would say, well, you can't do it during COVID. We say, well, we're doing it already, um, and that did work. So it meant that we 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 had a a year and a half making it, which which was longer than we needed, but we had to start early. And because of COVID, things took a lot longer to arrange. You know, getting rehearsals for with dancers, for example, that was very complicated. So it took us a year and a half. We ended up with maybe maybe half the budget that we had originally anticipated. So um, that was a struggle. But what was really good, though, is we had something to do during COVID. So nobody, we didn't mind. You know, it was it was it was a different it was a different economic decision um, than you would normally make. Um, but yeah, it was expensive. Dancers, dancers need, you know, they need to be properly paid. They need rehearsal time. Um, they need to be driven to where they're going. We need to give them overnight accommodation. We have to buy them food. So all of these things are considerations. Um, but we, we try to be clever. So a lot of the time we filmed close to where the dancers lived so that we wouldn't have to give them accommodation. They were living there anyway. And we, so we went to the dancers instead of the other way around. Um, and we had big, we had big scenes. We were going to shoot in in uh, around the world. Um, there were even plans for shooting in India, and we had to cancel them because uh, well, COVID obviously, but also we just we didn't have the money anymore for doing doing these very big set pieces. Um, so one of my favorite scenes is the scene with um, Stephanie Keen dancing with Cormac um, Begley on the pier, and he's just playing the little box, and she's just dancing to it. Now then there's a scene that would have been had twenty people in it had we had the money we originally planned, but it ended up with just two and it's beautiful. So sometimes you may be, you know, we're over, we're too ambitious and sometimes having to be curtailed is not a bad thing. It's always very frustrating when you're in production, you'll all find this, but, but sometimes it, it you know, it, it breeds creativity, doesn't it? Because you have to think about some other solution and maybe that's a better solution. Yeah, any other questions? So honey, you want to ask the question? Yeah, okay, ask. Uh, so when we see musical films, we see a lot of drama and uh, a lot of cliche content. But yours was totally different. Like it was enjoyable and had a lot of good music and wasn't very cliche and dram dramatic. So uh, what were your views on the subject of the film when you started making it? Wow, I... I... I, I suppose really wanted people just to have a good time and and also to so I had gone on a journey of discovery to try and figure out so I don't dance I'm not an Irish dancer I didn't know very much about the subject so so that was I hoped that we could make a film that would that would be a voyage of discovery for 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 viewers um it's also interesting and I I'm so proud um to have won the awards that were that has brought us together but also in Toronto four weeks ago, the film won two with the best festival in the Black and uh, International Black and Diversity Film Festival. So that's surprising. Both of these awards are very surprising for a film like this because the film about Irish dance. So I think that was the thing that motivated me most was to go, you know, cultures are not what they seem and people can have very sort of, can get attached to notions of cultural purity which are dangerous and generally misguided. And um, that, so the film, even though it's about dance, is not a film about dance. It's a film about something completely different. It's a film about how perhaps, well, the reality of the human race is that it's very, very mixed and that we all learn from each other and there's cultural assimilation in all sorts of ways and ways that gets forgotten. But, but if we just dig a little bit, we can find it. So, so that to me is what the film's about. And I just wanted to be a voyage of discovery for viewers to get to there because we, we, if we had started the film and said that, no one would have watched it. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, we, it pretends to be one film and then it actually is another film. And maybe that's why it's interesting for viewers because even if you don't agree, there's always something interesting happening that's making you have a conversation with the film. Um, I suppose that's another thing that motivates me in all the films all the documentaries that I, I get to make is, and maybe this is something that for, for you all to think about it is, is, is not to be telling people what to be thinking, but to try and engage them to the point that they're thinking for themselves. And they don't necessarily have to agree with you. They just have to be thinking. It's great if they don't agree with you, that's fine. But just to try and push their buttons to make them feel or think or, 
you know, emote in some way. That's 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 the that's the mission, isn't it? That's what we want to do. Um, yeah. So so, and I get terribly excited by those things, and I spend months and months and months and months walking, just thinking about what might push somebody's button. Um, you know. Uh, yeah, so Ani, you ask the question, then we'll move on. Hello, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, hi, sir. Firstly, it was a treat to watch your film. It was really nice. I just wanted to ask, what is the purpose behind this particular form, like the Irish dance, like we also called it step dance. So what is the purpose of showing this form, like? Uh, and who invented this dance form, the Irish dance form? Wow. Oh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I can answer your question because we don't know who invented it. Um, but it it has come from. It has very very old origins. So there's a scene in a. Uh, going back to the question about how much did it cost to make and how long did it take, we we had, we ended up once we lost some of the funders, we ended up with five funders and each of the five funders needed a different version of the film and that made it so frustrating the last two months of making this were horrible so we had a we had for rte the irish channel they wrongly wanted two separate hours so that they could put it out over two weeks and then get lots and lots of advertising around the two weeks um so that they can make more money on it, right? So, but there was the wrong way to show the film. Then there's the feature version that you've seen. And then there was a version for BBC and a version for American television. But the reason I say that is in the RT version, the one good thing about it is it had a scene that answers your question. And that scene was with a, a music historian who has remade, re rebuilt or, or made replicas of musical instruments that were found in the Irish bogs, which are 6,000 years old, and they're pipes, and he can play an Irish jig on them. And it's a lovely scene because he plays a jig and then dances a step dance to it. And, and maybe, we don't know, but maybe 6,000 years ago they were doing step dances. We don't know. Um, what, what, is, what we do know, though, is that from the earliest records, which, which, which are which are accurate. We can we, we know from the 1500s, the Irish were doing step dances. They were doing percussive dances with their feet that would make noise. They were using their feet as, as, as musical instruments. E even the earliest bar cottages are very simple, primitive hovels. Some, some of them have a box put into the ground under the mud floor. So that you go into the middle of the room and you would dance in the middle of the room, which you wouldn't see a box, but because there was a box underneath the floor, it would make a hollow sound a better sound. So we know that for at least for 500 years, they've been doing step dance. But then as you see in the film, they do step dance in England, they do step dance in Africa, they do step dance in Spain. So, you know, it probably was borrowed. And maybe people used to share it. So that's, that's as much as we know, we don't know more. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you so much for the insightful discussion. Thank you. Uh, 6,000 years, we also have, in India also, we talk a lot of things which are 5,000 and 6,000 6, years old. That's right. It's quite a interesting thing. I'm sure it's that old and it's uh, carried through uh, in those years through continents and it's you now moved all over the world in its own varied form. And yeah. uh, that, uh, that diversity, that variedness, that's the beauty of the culture that uh, you know, we are here to celebrate today. Mm. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Now I will uh, Thank you, move Bravi. on to the next uh, director friend over here, um, Mr. Kumar Chandrasekharan. He's the director of uh, a movie which is on Indian festivals, the Grand Festival, India's Grand Festival, Durga Puja. Durga Puja is a festival which is um, uh, celebrated all over the country, uh, very prominently in Bengal state. Uh, but almost every parts of the country in some or the other forms. Again, it's a little varied forms at different uh, parts of the country. Um, let's talk to uh, Mr. Kumar Chandrasekharan. Kumarji, uh, please talk to us about your inspiration, your experiences, your challenges. How did you, you know, uh, create this whole thing? One of the beautiful thing of this film is a sand art, which is very difficult and very complicated, uh, you know, 
uh, way to uh, create the dart and uh, he has used sand art in the film beautifully to describe all the nine forms of the uh, mother durga uh, goddess durga uh, kumar ji over to you uh, thank you children thank you students and uh, ramesh ji and uh, hi mr rohan first thing uh mr rohan says that he is using s6 sony s7 with gimbals same thing i am using it's the same thing i am using in my film my documentary first thing ye bahut difficult hua hai mujhe this is it takes me 4 hours to complete the projects because in our durga puja there is the saptami ashtami navami dasami i am only one director i can't shoot all over india to at a time so so that in the 1919 to uh, 2019 before the covid so i shoot some portion in, in uh, lokhandwala in mumbai and some portion shoot in kolkata then lockdown come 2021 then 21 i am started again पहले मैं कलकत्ता किया एक टीम मैंने कलकत्ता भेजा और कलकत्ता से मुझे व्हाट्सएप के जरिए मेरे को दिखाया जाता था कि हम ये शूट कर रहे हैं और मैं उनको बता रहा था कि आप मैं मैं तभी यहाँ पे मिस्टर गोविंद जी का एंकरिंग शूट कर रहा था प्रेजेंटिंग प्लस एक साथ मैंने लोखंडवाला की कवरेज कर रहा था लोखंडवाला कवरेज एंड कलकत्ता कवरेज मुझे व्हाट्सएप में दिखाया जाता था मैं उनको बोल रहा था नहीं आप कैमरा लीजिए कैमरा उस तरफ लीजिए उस तरफ लीजिए और यहाँ मैं शूट कर रहा हूँ और सेम डे मुझे अष्टमी के दिन हर एक फेस्टिवल का हर एक जो दुर्गा पूजा होता है जैसे कि कलकत्ता में एंड लोखंड वाला उनकी जो ट्रेडिशन उनकी जो क्राउडेड उनकी जो थिंग्स मुझे एक ही साथ कैप्चर करना था और मुझे मिस्टर गोविंद नामदेव जी के साथ एज ए नरेटर उनका भी शूट करना था मुझे तीनों शूटिंग एक ही दिन में That the October 13, 2021, same day में तीन जगह एक ही साथ शूटिंग कर रहा हूँ तो इट्स ए वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू जज बाई व्हाट्सअप इट्स करेक्ट और नॉट करेक्ट इट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट देन आफ्टर द कम्प्लीट देन देर इज द सो मच इट डांस दैट द वेरी फॉर्म ऑफ डांस जो ढाक म्यूजिक के साथ जो डांस किया जाता है जो ढाक म्यूजिक हमारा बहुत पुराना है ढाक म्यूजिक के साथ डांस भी शूट करना था मुझे सेम टाइम में और सेम टाइम में ढाक म्यूजिक मुझे तीनों जगह की शूट करना था तो मुझे सेम टाइम में क्योंकि कभी कभी क्या होता है ना दस पंद पांच मिनट आगे पीछे हो जाता है टाइमिंग में वहां पे पहले स्टार्ट हो गया यहाँ पे बाद में स्टार्ट हुआ तो मैं उनको बोला था कि भाई मुझे ये ये पोर्सन कम्प्लीटली चाहिए तो आई एम यूजिंग सिक्स टू सेवन कैमरा एंड इच एरिया कलकत्ता एंड वाशी एंड लोखंड वाला मुंबई देन सिंदूर खेला बहुत सारे सिंदूर खेला जो एक बहुत बड़ा फेस्टिवल होता है वहां पे पान पत्ते में ये करके पहले भगवान को सिंदूर माता जी को सिंदूर लगाया जाता है फिर देन सिंदूर खेला होता है वो भी एट ए टाइम में मुझे एक्सपोज करना था ये सेम टाइम में सेम डे में तो ये सब करने के बाद मुझे लास्ट को सोचा मैंने वट आर थिंक वट से वट द म्यूजिक then i contact me and my producer contact mr lakshmikant pali who is a very renowned music director in odisha and also he has got some national award for the music chandi part he is the only one person who can uh, do the chandi part and sarva mangalya mangalya then i am coming to the part the how to describe the things ki sat seven अवतार होना चाहिए सेवन रूप होना चाहिए एंड भगवान को जो अस्त्र शस्त्र प्रदान करेंगे ये सब चीजों को मुझे डिस्क्राइब करने के लिए बहुत डिफिकल्ट हुआ इट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू डिस्क्राइब देन आई गो फॉर द सैंड एंड आर्टिस्ट इट द इंटरनेशनल अक्लेम्ड सैंड एनिमेशन मिस्टर मानस कुमार साहू डिड दिस मी मानस साहू एंड माई प्रोड्यूसर विल सिट टूगेदर एंड थिंक हाउ टू डिस्क्राइब द प्रॉपर थिंग्स then i go proper research and then then me kushwanda mujhe roop unka ye hota hai unka ye roop wo hota hai to then hum sab kuch discussion karke then we go for a shooting then complete the shooting then 
वंस इट्स एडिटेड इट्स एडिट करने के लिए मुझे टू मंथ्स लग गए टू मंथ्स आई हैव सेवेंटी फाइव आवर्स फुटेज सो इट्स ए डिफिकल्ट फॉर मी टू द एडिट तो इट्स टेक मी टू मंथ्स देन आई गो फॉर अ बैकग्राउंड म्यूजिक बैकग्राउंड म्यूजिक डन बाय विशेष जैन इज ए ओनली ट्वेंटी वन ईयर्स ओल्ड इज द फर्स्ट टाइम बैकग्राउंड म्यूजिक एज ए डायरेक्टर तो आई हैव टू एक्सप्लेन ईच वर्ड एंड सो दैट शी कैन ही कैन पुट द सम म्यूजिक मेल नो आई वॉन्ट मे समथिंग ओम शब्द हमारे जो संस्कृत में जो शब्द होता है उसको म्यूजिक के थ्रू मुझे चाहिए तो देन इट्स द फाइनल प्रोजेक्ट इट्स द वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्रोजेक्ट फॉर मी दैट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट वाज सो कॉम्प्लेक्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ शूटिंग देयर वन फेस्टिवल एट थ्री डिफरेंट वेन्यूज ओनली वन डायरेक्टर मल्टी सिटी शूट एंड कोर्डिनेटिंग गेटिंग अ फील ओवर व्हाट्सएप ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट यू नो वॉट्स एपनिंग इन ईच लोकेशन parallel to that there is a narrator who is going to tell the story parallel to that there is an art which is sand animation so it was one of the most complex uh, exercises in terms of uh, the work that you know he has done uh, amazing work congratulations to the great work um, i would like uh, to pass on the mic to professor amrish saxena and then maybe some students if they have some question yes. and uh, then after that we'll have a quick word with one of our jury members who is also here Uh, Ramesh ji, um, over to Professor Amrish uh, Saxena, uh, Dean of uh, DMB Media School, Noida. Uh, thank you, Praveen ji. Uh, so, uh, uh, Kohar ji, uh, congratulations for making such a such a good film. I have watched it twice. I watched it uh, as a inaugural film in the Culture uh, Cinema Film Festival. when the festival was opened and today again i was watching this film it was really good to watch because you went uh, in each and every intricacies of uh, goddess durga though uh, we all know ki durga puja mein kya hota hai samanya roop se har bharatiya ko hi pata hoga but aapne uska jis tarah se jis jo jo vivid description hai jis tarah se depiction kiya wo well, that was uh, really good uh and obviously as you yourself said ki itna lamba footage tha and then so much time was taken in editing and all so apparently anybody who is watching the film who was watching the film can make out that how much efforts have gone into making of this film so really really a very nice and uh, impressive films film uh i will ask a student to ask question priya you wanted to ask a question so so my name is arun and uh, jaise ki normally we have seen ki temples mein allowed nahi hota cameras wagera shooting allowed nahi hoti so mera hamesha se puchne ka tha ki normally jo shoots hote hain devotees wagera ke temple related to aap log ye sara allow kaise karte hain wo log kuch unhe payment hota hai ya fir aap wo direct aapko permission de dete hain aur jaise ki aapne ye bhi bola ki teen different locations mein shoot kara gaya hai to kya aise bhi chance bane the ki आप वो एक एरिया शूट नहीं कर पाए तो आपको स्पेशली उसके लिए अलग से बनाना पड़ा अपने हिसाब से बनाना पड़ा उस लो, उसके लोकेशन पे नहीं हो पाया नहीं मुझे मेरे हमसे कोई एक रुपये चार्ज नहीं किए मैं परमिशन लिए थे सब जगह की लेकिन कलकत्ता में मैं परमिशन नहीं लिए थे क्योंकि हम उन लोग बेसिकली डीएसएलआर कैमरा में यूज करते हैं तो हम रैंडमली वहां पे भेजे हुए लोग जैसे कि फोटोग्राफर्स होते हैं तो वहां पे हम रैंडमली हम शूट करते हैं जैसे कि आपने बहुत सारे शॉर्ट्स उसमें एंड में देखे होंगे कि वहां पे बोलते कोरोना महामारी में तो सब लोग मास्क पहने हुए हम कोरोना के टाइम में 2021 में हम तभी लोग हमारा वहां पे बैठे हुए थे जब तक लोगों के मुंह में मास्क नहीं जाएगा वो शूटिंग नहीं करेंगे बहुत सारे लोग मास्क हटा के शूटिंग कर ये आ जाते हैं पूजा करने तो हम बेसिकली उनको ध्यान में रख के सब शूट किया और किसी ने हमारे ऊपर एक रुपये चार्ज नहीं किए ना लोखंडवाला में शूटिंग किए ना वासी में शूटिंग किए हमको कोई भी एक रुपया हमको चार्ज नहीं किया हम प्रॉपर परमिशन लिए और बाकी रहा जो मंदिर में शूटिंग करना बहुत सारे मंदिर में अलाउ नहीं होता है और बहुत सारे मंदिर में अलाउ होता है जैसे जगन्नाथपुरी में आपको कैमरा अलाउ नहीं है जो लिंगराज मंदिर में अलाउ नहीं है लेकिन आपको कोणार्क मंदिर में अलाउड है लेकिन मंदिर में उसका कोणार्क मंदिर के अंदर 
जा नहीं सकते क्योंकि अंदर पूरा पैक कर देंगे तो बाहर से आप शूट कर सकते हैं जब बहुत सारे मंदिर में आप बाहर की तरफ शूट कर सकते हैं अंदर शूट नहीं कर सकते कल को अगर हमको बहुत जरूरी हुआ कि हम अंदर से शूटिंग करना है तो हम अंदर का सेट लगाना पड़ता है हमको जहाँ पे परमिशन नहीं मिला अगर कल को मुझे दुर्गा माता की कोई मंदिर होता ये तो मैं पेंडल में शूट किया हुआ है जब कोई मंदिर होता अगर मुझे मंदिर में शूट करना पड़ता अगर मुझे परमिशन नहीं देते मैं मंदिर इंटीरियर का सेट लगाता आज इट इज सेट लगाते मैं शूट करता हूँ Uh, so my question to you is uh, when we talk about durga puja then every indian related uh, with their particular region or state so jab humne ye dekha to isme ek do cheeze thi jo matlab agar main particular kisi state se aati hu to maine bali pradhan miss kiya ki wo cheez yahan pe nahi thi because we have covered uh, many such topic like controversial maybe because uh, you have shown punne mati uh, jahan pe uh, jo prostitution ke प्लेस से हम मिट्टी को लेके आते हैं तो इफ वी आर शोइंग दैट देन आई वांट टू आस्क दैट इट इज पर्टिकुलर अबाउट कोलकाता दुर्गा पूजा दैट्स व्हाई वी हैव नॉट शोन बलि प्रदान और इज देयर एनी अदर रीजन नो आपका दो क्वेश्चन एक है बलि प्रथा एंड वैश्यालय की मिट्टी राइट यस सर वैश्यालय की मिट्टी के लिए हमने शूट किए थे दिखाने के लिए लेकिन हमने नहीं दिखाया गया जान के हमने बात में डिलीट की क्योंकि किसी भी इसमें दुर्गा पूजा में कहा गया है कि औरतों के नारी के सम्मान करो नंबर वन और मैं उसमें मैं दिखा रहा था मैंने सूट भी कर लिया था कि ऐसे मिट्टी आता है ऐसे ये होता है ऐसे सूट कर लिया लेकिन मैं ये देखा कि कोई एक बात को वैश्य शब्द को मैं जस्टिफाई कर रहा हूँ अंडरलाइन कर रहा हूँ तो इसीलिए मैंने उसमें कोई कुछ दिखाया नहीं प्रेजेंटर के मुंह में खाली बोल दिया जो कि अंडरस्टैंडेबल और ये स्पेशली बंगाल में ही होता है नंबर वन नंबर टू क्वेश्चन इज बलि प्रथा बलि प्रथा वहां पे दिखाया गया है वहां पे कहा गया कि कद्दू और काकड़ी की बलि दिया जाता है हमको काटते हुए दिखाया गया है और दो काटने का साउंड वो जो काटने का जो साउंड है उसको मैंने हाईलाइट किया हुआ है ताकि लोगों के अंदर अंडरलाइन रहे बलि प्रथा दो टाइप की होता है दुर्गा पूजा में अष्टमी के दिन रात को 12 बजे के 12 बजकर 10 मिनट के बाद बलि प्रथा स्टार्ट होता है वो पूजा वो काफी लंबा पूजा होता है ठीक है वहां पे वेजिटेबल्स दिया जाते हैं कद्दू का कड़े बहुत सारे लोगों के मन में धारणा ये है कि बलि प्रथा में जानवर इन लोगों को बलि दिया जाता है लेकिन दुर्गा पूजा में नहीं दिया जाता है ये अंडरलाइन किया हुआ है और बलि प्रथा का मैंने दिखाया दो साउंड दिखाया क्लियरली उनकी वो नहीं होती है मतलब की तो मुझे लगता है हमारे इंडिया में कई जगहों पर ये होता है क्योंकि तो मतलब आपके हिसाब से मतलब पुराणों में ऐसा नहीं है मतलब बेसिकली इसीलिए हम नहीं हम आपने नहीं दिखाया मूवी में है ना नहीं देवी देवताओं के पास बलि देना जानवर को बहुत पुरानी प्रथा है मैं आपको नंबर वन एक एक कर मैं बहुत शूट किया हूँ बलि प्रथा उड़ीसा की भवनी पाटना में एक बलि दिया जाता था पूजा के टाइम में हजारों संख्या में बकरी और लास्ट में के भैंस काटा दिया जाता बलि दिया जाता था 2017 के बाद उसको बैन कर दिया गया काली पूजा में अभी भी बलि दिया जाता है लेकिन वो रात को बारह बजकर बाद दिया जाता है सबके सामने नहीं दिया जाता है क्योंकि अभी बहुत सारे गाइडलाइन से आ गया बलि प्रथा हमारा पुराने है बहुत पुराण शास्त्र में है नरबली भी हल्दी खेत में नरबली भी दिया जाता था ये मैं जानता हूँ मैं जब छोटा था जब ट्राइब एरिया में मेरे फादर जॉब करते थे मैं वहां रहता तो वहां पर बलि प्रथा था हल्दी खेत में इंसानों की बलि दिया जाता था लेकिन उसका कोई प्रूफ नहीं था ठीक है ना तो हम लोग तो दिखा नहीं सकते और दुर्गा पूजा में पशु बलि नहीं दिया जाता है किस जमाने में दिया जाता होगा लेकिन हमारी जो पारंपरिक जो शब्द है जहां से हमने रिसर्च किया वहां पे पशु पशु बलि का कोई जिक्र नहीं है वो काली पूजा में है और दूसरी माताओं की पूजा में होता है ओके सर थैंक यू सर इस क्वेश्चन से संबंधित भी एक आंसर देना चाहूंगी वो ये कि बलि प्रथा की बात है जरूर लेकिन वहाँ सिम्बॉलिक बलि के रूप में नारियल की बलि अभी दी जाती है 
और पशु बलि जहाँ तक मैं समझती हूँ ज़्यादातर जगह बंद कर दी गई है जो मुझे कुछ मंदिर पता है जहाँ मैंने बहुत पहले बचपन में कभी देखा भी था लेकिन अब वो बलि बंद कर दी गई है और बलि के नाम पे नारियल को फोड़ा जाता है और उसी को बलि माना जाता है तो एक तो ये बात है और जो आपने पूरी फिल्म में दिखाया वो वाकई में बहुत अपीलिंग था मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा क्योंकि दुर्गा पूजा आपने सच कहा कि बहुत सारी जगह बहुत मान्यता के साथ मनाई जाती है और खास तौर से इसमें जो आपने सिंदूर खेला दिखाया वो वाकई में बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है जो सारी महिलाएं सिंदूर भगवान देवी माँ का लेती हैं और उसको एक दूसरे पे चढ़ाती हैं और दूसरे को सम्मान करती हैं तो ये बहुत कुछ कुछ जो आपने रिसर्च वर्क किया वो काफ़ी इंटरेस्टिंग था और बहुत अच्छी तरीके से इसको डिपिक किया सो बहुत बहुत बधाई सर आपको और बहुत अच्छी फिल्म थी बहुत अच्छा लगा थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सो वी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर अ गुड गुड डिस्कशन आंसरिंग ऑल द क्वेश्चंस फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ओवर हियर वी हैव विद अस वन ऑफ आर जूरी मेंबर्स मिस्टर रमेश टेकवानी आई वुड लाइक हिम टू शेयर सम ऑफ हिज ऑब्जर्वेशंस विद अस ऑन बोथ द फिल्म्स बिकॉज़ ही हैज बीन कीनली एसोसिएटेड विद ऑल द फिल्म्स द फेस्टिवल रमेश जी प्लीज there was a thing about shooting films of permissions of uh, shooting commando commando means no permission and you uh, shoot today even feature films are shot like that when danny boyle shot uh, what was his film slum dog millionaire uh, he had used a dslr camera to shoot you know incognito or anonymously during in the slums of uh, mumbai so as not to attract attention i mean there was nothing he could have got permission and he had the money to do it but sometimes you don't want people to look into a camera and he got some good shots for it he had conducted a master class for us in india two is when you something that you spoke about and for the class i think while you are at the university and on private ground so to say you should practice using uh, a drone because even if you did have the land to shoot using you know a, a 70 mm lens i i don't think uh, you know with human handling and the tracks physical handling of tracks you know you would have got as smooth a shot or as sharp a focus i mean it was clearly visible it was beautiful that you used a drone i mean it was I mean, con- drone control was beautiful uh the fact that you could not shoot you know in large crowds really did not matter and the fact that you used a square piece of wood to create a platform uh for the shooting was fantastic and it looked like you had created a style out of it yet yet and this is commendable is when you are having large speakers and still be able to record under the plank you know the foot you know the tapping i mean i i, I still don't know how you did it but that you did it it was great and uh, this is something that you know when when we are trying to shoot sometimes your misfortune can become a stroke of luck and become stylized uh i mean as i call it necessity is the mother of invention now regarding the kolkata film durga puja film something that we liked about the film so beautifully was the presenter of the film now most of us in india know this man to be part of indian fiction cinema and he primarily takes the role of a villain but when you see this man presenting 
my god i mean to us it was a discovery of a presenter because the expression on his face was so genuine i mean he knew what he was talking about he was totally involved in the film and he was smiling his eyes were sparkling as he told the story and it was you know this fact of the film you know where probably it led to it becoming the opening film because it was fantastic and that's it you know you guys you know one thing about the film is the filmmaker is also a first time filmmaker right kumar yeah, this is my second time second time yeah first film is the that film mumbai international film festival correct so what is required here is this my guru taught me sometimes you know our experience weakens us sometimes when you don't know how you can you keep saying you know you you know saw through whatsapp you saw this and that you just took a chance and did it you didn't have enough you know record of how things can be done and we even same way with you you know because you started doing something and gradually you progress to do it you started with having 10 finances and then suddenly they chickened out so you decide let's go jump in at the deep end and that is what is important the idea is to take the first step this is a lesson from both, both the filmmakers that you take the first step and then you watch automatically when you come to the next you know fork or the turn the road becomes absolutely clear i think this is where both of you have taught of that and i know this that to this day this is a formula if i may say it's not a formula but this is a formula that works take the first step keep taking the steps and you will see the sun rising for you and lighting up the place so that's it guys great this time my god you really got into you know question mode it was fantastic it was more enlightening for us and uh, and that's it thank you very much thank you everybody Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, Ramesh ji. I I learned one thing that uh, taking the first step will make you take uh, many more steps of freedom, and you will be free soon from all the uh, inhibitions and the blockages that you have generally, which stops you from doing something. So I think it's very inspirational uh, uh, discussion we have had and. on this inspirational note uh, before i end the discussion i would uh, like to once again thank our academic partner dme noida and professor amrish saxena and his entire team um, and students who are here to be a part of this event uh, thank you everybody uh, we hope to meet again in the coming days coming months coming sessions coming editions as long as we continue to engage ourselves in this discussion thanks everybody thank you praveen sir thank you for such a wonderful opening of uh, today's screening by the culture cinema 2022 in association with dme and the cineast international film festival of india sifi the annual film festival of dme media school